What's up guys, this is The Honest Outlaw here, and today we're gonna be talking about the five best guns that you can get under $300. Now, before we do that, I wanna mention my patient supporters. Thank you guys very much. It's because of you guys that I have all the guns here that are on the list and that we review on the channel. If you wanna help support the channel, all you gotta do is go to the link in the description below, sign up for Patreon. Uh, if you sign up for Patreon, you get some exclusive content. I try to answer all my private messages over there on Patreon, although I do get a lot. And overall, it's just probably the best way to support the channel, so I appreciate it. Also, I wanna mention there is a local shelter in Ames, Iowa that I like to support. The link in the description for that will bring you right to the donate page and you can donate to some of those kids. Even before Patreon, I'd really appreciate if you would go to the shelter link there and donate a couple of dollars. They go a really long way, especially right now. So today we're gonna to be talking about the five best guns under $300. Now I have scoured high and low, far and wide to try to find the five best guns that you guys can get under $300. Now, most of these you can still get right now under $300. One of these guns is running about $310, so I'm cheating a little bit, but not that much. An extra $10, I hope, isn't gonna hurt you too much. We are basing this list upon not just uh, what I think of them, but kind of a broad range of what they're good for, how available they are, how reliable they are, how accurate they are, what features they come with out of the box, are they ready to go or are they not? And I think we've come up with a pretty comprehensive list overall of guns that will get you where you need to go for a really small amount of cash. First up is gonna be a gun that most of you know and probably shot for your very first gun. We're gonna be talking about the 1022. Oh, the rifle that everybody's dipshit uncle has shot a deer with at 500 yards that nobody actually saw. I'm just joking, but seriously, everybody's got a 22 story that they've shot an elk at 700 yards and yada, yada, yada. The reality is the 22 is good for a lot of things. Long range elk hunting, probably not so much. The 1022 comes in at around five pounds, has one mag right out of the box, usually with a capacity of 10, but you can get magazines from 30 all the way to 100. Cold hammer forged barrel. It's got a push button cross, cross bolt safety on it here, uh, reminiscent of the Remington 870, as you can see right there. Uh, some people like that, some people don't. I prefer the AR safety, however, uh, this is really intuitive, especially for new shooters. Although, uh, experienced shooters can also get a lot out of the 1022. The 1022 shoots the 22 caliber, what a surprise, which is the most affordable, usually extremely available, and uh, very lightweight, very low recoiling caliber. This handy little freedom stick is good for anything you'd really want to use it for. 22 is very quiet. It's extremely soft shooting, which is awesome for beginners because the first thing you want to do is find a firearm for new shooters that won't scare them out of the sport or game or hunting experience or whatever you want. Uh, if you start your eight year old off with a single shot 12 gauge, you're gonna have a lot of fun, but they're probably not gonna wanna shoot after that. Look, trust me, I know. A 22 is a really good way to go for that. Uh, and overall, I think that not only is it economical to shoot, but it's good for a lot of uses. I said small game hunting, uh, home defense in a pinch, certainly wouldn't be my first choice, but it's definitely better than a sharp stick any day of the week. Uh, 30 rounds on target with no recoil whatsoever can be a formidable weapon in the appropriate hand. Great survival gun, great truck gun, just simply because of the price. Uh, if it gets rusty, if it gets beat up a little bit, you don't have to worry too much. Comes with about as many accessories and uh, features as you could ever want. Now, the MSRP of the 1022 is gonna come in around $300. However, you can find these available for literally $150 to $200 if you look in the right places, which gives you a lot of room in that $300 for lots of other stuff. For example, you might be able to get a Bushnell red dot sight for $100 to put on it and still come in under that $300 mark. You get a couple of bricks of 22, well, in like 2019, not now, of course, but maybe you get two or three rounds. Overall, the gun is not only available and easy to shoot but it's also very accurate uh, you can get hits from a hundred yards and about a six inch plate pretty much every single time I can all day hit my plate rack with this at a hundred yards so it's very accurate and it also happens to be one of the most reliable semi-automatic 22s ever made maybe not the most reliable but pretty damn close and for under $300 man this thing's hard to beat up next is not that it is the Taurus G3C it is an extremely reliable pistol made by a company well known 
for not making reliable pistols. The Taurus G3C is one of a series of guns that Taurus makes that I would recommend called the G series. Uh, the predecessor to this, the G2C, can actually be had for even under $200 now, and again, I would absolutely recommend that. But if you have a $300 budget, I would go with the G3C because it has some upgrades, including a little better trigger, and it also ha comes with better sights, and they are Glock dovetails, so if you wanna change the sights, you can change them to whatever sight that you want. Gun comes with a manual safety, front slide serrations, and a Picatinny rail so you can mount a light for home defense if you so choose. Has a really good trigger with double strike capability and comes with 110 and 112 round magazine. It also has a thumb safety if you choose to use it. If not, you can always kind of just have it there and ride it like a uh, 1911, which helps a little bit with the recoil. The gun's really easy to shoot, and if you want to get two birds stoned at once, this is a great choice. Not only is it small enough for carry but it's also big enough for home defense and because you have that rail on it you can mount a weapon light to it so you could pull it out of your concealed carry holster you could throw a weapon light on it at night and use it for your home defense gun and 12 rounds of 9 millimeter would be more than adequate for that the g3c has a barrel length of 3.2 inches and an overall weight of only 22 ounces making it very lightweight but still very shootable the recoil on this is easily controlled uh, especially due to the good ergonomics of the grip and the better texture uh, on on the G3 model compared to the G2. One of the best shooting guns I've ever shot under $300, and if you look at any of my previous budget gun lists, like my under $300 handgun list, you'll see this gun lands very high on that list because of those features. We shot well over a 1,000 rounds through this gun, and it was 100% reliable. Whether that happens to you, I would bet so, just because most of the people that I know that have this gun also have no issues, but one of the things that you do miss out on with cheap budget guns is gonna be quality control, so sometimes you can get a little more likelihood of a lemon compared to maybe something like a premium gun like maybe a Smith & Wesson or a Glock. However, with the features and the reliability and the accuracy and the ease of use on the Taurus G3C, it would be extremely difficult for me not to recommend this for pretty much anybody looking for a do-it-all gun, especially somebody looking for their uh, first-time carry gun. The G3C is, is just a really phenomenal choice. Coming in somewhere between two and $300, depending on where you look, most likely you'll still have room in that $300 budget for a holster and maybe a couple extra mags. And if you're really lucky, like two rounds of defensive ammo. Now number three, this beautiful beast in front of you is the Savage Axis XP223 Remington. Now I got this in 223 just because I have a ton of it already and it kind of fits a really cool niche for me. You know, it's just a plinkin' gun. It's a gun that's relatively cheap to shoot, or at least used to be, and uses a caliber that I have a ton of. Now, the Savage Axis is really unique in its particular niche because there's not a lot of bolt guns that come in at a price that this does. I got this gun for $279 at my local store, uh, not just with the gun, but it also came with this 3x9 uh, Bushnell scope, which is not the best scope in the world, but it's pretty good, especially considering the cost. If you only have $300 and you're looking to hit some shit at, let's say, 500 yards, the Savage Axis is really the only way to go. We took this out to a Brownell shoot a couple of days ago, and I was able to get consistent hits at not one, not just 100 yards, but 200 yards, 300 yards, and we even got a couple out to 500 yards, uh, making this, even though it's a budget gun, extremely accurate. Oh, but they got their gun. Oh, I went off to the right. I saw it. I just saying, like, I don't know that we have many hard cases. Yeah, I don't think we have any soft. We've got a bunch of those bulldog cases. Yeah. Oh. I didn't see it. I heard a hit. I hit it. I heard steel mm -hmm. hit. I hit it. At Did five? It? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, heck yeah. I could actually see the impact at 500, so I just adjusted and hit it. Uh, 500 yard hit with the Savage, how about that? The Axis comes in at around six pounds. It has one four round detachable magazine, which is actually important. Back in the day, uh, bolt guns would always have internal mags, but that can be kind of a pain in the ass, especially with a uh, mounted optic. So it's nice if you have any stoppages or anything like that, you can detach the magazine and clear any issues. It has a 22 inch button rifled carbon steel barrel with a one and nine twist. And I like the one and nine twist for this just because it has the ability to stabilize bullets anywhere 
from 55 grain all the way up to 77 grain. So it gives you a lot of diversity in your particular ammo, especially in the ammo crunch that you have now. You never know what 223 that you're gonna be able to find. So this will pretty much do the job for any ammo that you're gonna find. Obviously, you're gonna find ammo that works better than others as far as accuracy, but you're gonna get practical accuracy of around an inch out of this gun with pretty much whatever ammo that you use. Now the stock itself is kind of sleek and interesting, a very lightweight design, and it's really snag free, which is nice. So if you're out in the field or anything like that, or the back country, it's gonna be durable enough for you and it's not gonna snag on your gear. However, it doesn't have some of the adjustment features as some of the higher dollar rifles, but you can kind of expect that for the price that you're sitting in. It has a manual safety. The bolt is relatively smooth and easy to use. Not quite as smooth as something like a Tika 3 or something like that, but it's really good for the price. Also, if you look at the sticker right here that Savage puts all over it, you will find that it does have an adjustable AccuTrigger, which again is phenomenal value for the money. And finally, it does also have sling mounts, and then I added a uh, Harris bipod onto this guy, which is around $80, and I, I really think that's a great investment. If you're getting into this for around 300 bucks, you got some cash to spare, a bipod will help that accuracy go a little bit further because it helps stabilize the gun. You can also use a rolled up towel or a bag of sand or something like that as well. Now the Savage Axis not only is available, but it comes in a vast amount of calibers, anywhere from 223 uh, all the way up to seven millimeter. But there is like 10 or 12 different calibers that this gun comes in, so there's a flavor for everybody. In at number two here, we have the High Point 995 nine millimeter carbine. If Ricky from Trailer Park Boys was gonna design a tactical rifle, this would be it. The High Point carbine is brought to you by the same people that make the Yeet Cannon. This is kind of what you'd get if you mixed an MP5 with, well, a high point. With an MSRP of around $300, but an actual price of around $200 to $250, believe it or not, this is a really good option. With a barrel length of 16 inches or 18 inches, depending on which one you want, and an overall weight of six pounds, this gun actually has a lot of features on it that will make you want it. It has a Picatinny rail on the bottom for mounting lights and lasers. It has another one up here in case you wanna mount two lights. It has adjustable ghost ring sights with a hooded front sight, which are actually pretty accurate and usable. Picatinny rail up top here to mount uh, whatever optic that you'd like, preferably a red dot, because there's not a whole lot of space there for an actual scope, but you can take uh, the gigantic rear sight off if you so choose. Last round bolt open, which is pretty nice, considering that it is a blowback AR style gun that comes in well under $300. It does have a very unique pistol grip and an polymer adjustable stock on the back there that you can adjust for uh, cheek and for length of pull. Comes with a threaded barrel, uh, one half by 28 if you wanna throw a suppressor on there, although the tax stamp for a suppressor would be as much as this entire gun, but it still would be pretty funny. So by all means, uh, take a picture of that and send it to me if you have one of those. Believe it or not, the High Point Carbine is 100% American made and assembled in the United States and happens to have a lifetime warranty. Now you're asking me, why would you get a nine millimeter rifle? Doesn't make a lot of sense, unless you've actually shot a few of them and you know they're really fun and they do have quite uh, quite a bit of uses, even over something like a 5.56. First off, it's got relatively low penetration depending on ammunition choice. So if you do live in a crowded area like an apartment or something like that, it might be a relatively good option. Even though it does shoot a pistol uh, caliber round, it does come, well, first off, it does come in larger calibers like 10 millimeter, but if you're sticking to the nine millimeter, it does have quite the advantage over a handgun because you do get more velocity out of that 16 inch barrel. And on top of that, you do have more points of contact. So it's a lot easier to shoot for uh, beginners and even advanced shooters. Certainly a lot quieter indoors than your average 5.56, so if you do happen to shoot it in your structures, you won't go deaf and you won't hear all that afterward, which does suck, trust me, I've been there. It also is a lot cheaper to shoot. Uh, even though nine millimeter is still really expensive now, it's always gonna be cheaper than 5.56 or 308 or even 7.62 by 39. So you're gonna have a relatively good time uh, shooting this, especially if you wanna shoot steel because you can shoot this even close range up to 10 yards. If you're gonna shoot steel with like a 223 or 5.56, you're gonna have to move back to even 50 or 100 yards depending on the quality of your steel target. I think this makes an awesome beginner gun or even a really good entry level home defense gun. 
Part of that is because it does look kind of cool for what it is, and it just happens to be extremely reliable. Uh, we did a full test on this, and we'll have a review here shortly. We did put a thousand rounds through this gun, and I think we had like, what, two or three failures, which is certainly not bad for the price of the gun. Now, one of the cons to this gun is gonna be the single stack magazine. So even though it is a 16 inch nine millimeter, it only takes 10 round mags. You can get those weird, super trashy double stack magazines that I'm gonna probably show you in some filler right now because even though I'm making fun of them, I do have some. Those are not very reliable, but these standard 10 round magazines we saw no failures with whatsoever. Overall, it's a fun gun, it looks kinda cool, and it functions very reliably for the price that it is. And considering that you can get, I don't know, like 52 of these for the price of an MP5, does a pretty good job in my book. All right, now before we get to number one, you're gonna have to look at my smiling face a little bit more because we're gonna get into some honorable mentions. First honorable mention is gonna be, well, the little brother to the gun you just saw, the High Point C9. Most of you think that that gun's cheesy, but the reality is for $100 or $150, it's actually a pretty decent handgun, and it is relatively reliable. We did do a thousand round review of it, and it did actually turn out pretty well. I also wanna mention the Stevens Single Shot 20 gauge, my first gun I ever owned, well, at least my first shotgun anyway. It gets a little fuzzy around six or seven. The gun is reliable, accurate, and really useful for what it is. I wanna mention the Mossberg Patriot, of course, used Glocks, if you can get your hands on one of those, that would be a really great choice. Uh, used 870 comes in around $300, that's also a great option. Uh, the Ruger Security 9 is a really good choice. And finally, the Mossberg Maverick 88, which would have been number six if I would have put six guns on this list. However, six didn't have as good of a ring to it as five, so the Mossberg 88 got left off. Now the Maverick 88 was a gun that I first bought out of a pawn shop when I was 18 years old and I was shocked to see how reliable it actually was. Shotguns are very useful, they use a diverse range of ammunition and the Mossberg 88 comes in a bunch of different calibers and it still has relatively the same quality as the uh, mainstay, the 500, it just has a lot cheaper price. Now we'll get into number one here, and it really couldn't be anything else. I tried not to put it on the list because this is my cheat gun. It's slightly over $300, but again, I think I bought mine for like $308, $310, so if you can't bump it up $8, I don't know what to tell you. It is the M&P Shield 1.0, the gold standard of carry guns. I actually have a thousand round review of the M&P Shield where it did go a thousand rounds with zero malfunctions and it was extremely accurate all the way from zero up to a hundred yards, which is pretty impressive for such a tiny pocket pistol. It was one of the first guns to really come out and be reliable for the caliber and the size that it is. The overall weight on the shield is 20.8 ounces, making it very lightweight, and the overall capacity comes with an eight plus one or seven plus one round magazine. Metal sights, you can get it with or without a thumb safety, and it has an Armanite impregnated finish on it, making it virtually rust proof, and for around $300, that's very impressive. Has a pretty good trigger and great texture, making it relatively easy to shoot, even at distance. They come from an extremely reputable manufacturer that has great customer support, so if you ever have any issues, I doubt you will, but if you do, it won't be a problem. Not only is the gun accurate, but the shootability of the shield is really what sets it above between the shootability and the reliability. But the recoil impulse on the M&P Shield is unlike any of its peers. It has a really low recoil impulse and you can pile up those rounds extremely quickly even though it is a very small gun. Very easy to carry and the reliability is second to none. For the price that it is and for the availability that it has, it really is the number one pistol under $300. One of the best benefits to the M&P Shield is gonna be its availability. It's available in every gun store across the United States, but not just the gun itself. The magazines are gonna be there in the holster as well. You have to remember with the carry gun, you're getting a system. You're getting a gun that is going to need a couple of things right out of the box. You're gonna need some extra magazines, you're gonna need a couple rounds to plink with, you're gonna need a couple defensive rounds, and you're gonna need a really good holster, which is almost as important as the gun itself. And the awesome part about the shield, since it's so popular, every holster on earth is made for the shield, so you won't have any issues finding one. And later, if you want to upgrade to a slightly more expensive pistol, you can get the Shield Plus, which has a capacity of 12 plus one or 14 plus one out of the box. Now that's gonna be around $500, but is my personal carry gun, and I can't recommend it enough. 
hopefully you like this list of best guns under $300. I'd really like to see your guys' list. Let me know what you think would be on your list of the top five guns under $300 in the comment section below. Please like and subscribe. Please help out your local homeless shelters and remember to recycle. I'll check you later. Good thing I've got the camera rolling for all these extra <laughs> Spitting all over the gun. No one will know. Like fucking Daffy Duck. Wow, this is really solid life advice, honey. Is it? That's what I'm here for. Oh shoot, babe. Hmm. Should I get my flamingo chair out of the background? Yeah. Okay. We got a lot of complaints on the last video about the bird noises. So we got our patented noise maker here that we're just gonna pop a round off every once in a while. That way, uh, you know, scares the birds away.